welcome to episode 60 of the Arian Ants podcast. My name is Ariel and this is a video podcast where I talk about all the things that I have been knitting and spinning on for the past week. So today it is Saturday, February 3rd. I cannot believe it is already February. January just flew by, but I maybe kind of feel like January always feels like it goes by really fast, but anyway, we are now in the second month of 2024, and that's just crazy to me, but yeah, lots of lots of good knitting and spinning has been happening. I Sometimes I, I already feel like I'm maybe behind in some of my goals this year, which I'm not going to pressure myself about them, but it is something I want to keep in mind, date-wise and like my progress. But anyway, uh, I am filming a little earlier in the day than I usually do, and that is due to the fact that I i don't think I've ever talked about this. So I ice skate as my other hobby, which I think I've mentioned before, but part of like training for, for ice skating, I do a virtual like workout uh, class on Saturdays. And they're usually at 12 p.m., like lunchtime. But, and so I usually do that because I get very sweaty. And then I like, you know, shower and re redress myself, wear a knitted thing, and then film my podcast. Or like I have lunch and then do all of that. And so I usually film in the later afternoon. But today I'm filming a bit earlier because our class today got moved up earlier. Not that this is important to anyone, but just thought I'd share also because... I missed the class for like a month at the be beginning of this year, like and end of last year, beginning of this year. I missed a few classes and I have not been working out. And so I got back into it last weekend and I was so sore um, this past week. And today I am still sore, especially my triceps. Um, so like putting my hair up, like doing this motion, oh my gosh, it's burning over here like it hurts so bad so even like anyway like putting on sweaters my knitwear and all of that like I just oh my gosh my arms are so sore but that has nothing to do with what I knit this week I could knit fine I was like oh my gosh what if it hurts to knit but it was fine so anyway uh I am not wearing anything new like newly finished objects, although I have one finished object this week, but it is still drying. I will show it to you, but it's it's still wet. So I decided to wear some previously uh, knitted things that I've talked about in the past, and so I won't go into too much detail about them, but just thought I'd share it with you. Because, yeah, I always start with what I'm wearing. I didn't even like introduce this part. Okay. We'll start with what I'm wearing today. Today I am wearing, first of all, the slanty stripes. This is the V-neck tee. I'll like open my cardigan so you can see it. There's no sleeves. This is the slanty stripes by Emily Curtis. And I will stand up. You can see it's called slanty stripes because there's stripes and there's little, little slanty stripes um, on each of the rows here. And it goes all the way around in the back as well. The yarn I used for that, or for this, is main color is Coast to Coast Yarn Classic Sock in the colorway Unexpected Friendship. And the stripes, I used a mini set from the Yarn Addict Co., or now she is known as Little Fiber Co. And it was the tonal set called Fiber Friends. Or it was a, there were, I think, a variegated and a tonal Fiber Friends mini set. And yeah, these were the tonals. And so I forget how many colors, I'm sure I could count how many colors, but you can just see it there. And I thought it was really cute because both of the colors had, they were from two different dyers, but they were both uh, themed around friendship. And so I thought that was very cute. And Emily Curtis is a friend of mine. So I felt very like, it's all about friendship for my slanty stripes here. And it's been great to wear uh, lately because again, it's just been, kind of hot here in Seattle. I say again, but did I talk about the weather already? I forget. Anyway, it's been nice to wear a tank top, but when it does get a little cold or when the windows open for a little bit, I do get a tad chilly. So I 
been wearing my gown cardigan by Suman on. And the yarn I used for this is Explore Knits Denali Sock in the colorway Drift. And I, yeah. Did I talk about needle size for any of these? I don't know. But here is the gown cardigan. I honestly, I kind of forgot that I had this cardigan and I was like cleaning up my pile of knitted things that I like to wear. Like, I don't know. Please tell me I'm not the only one. When I wear my knitted things, and I wear knitted things pretty much every day, especially when it's like now time. I think summertime is when I like sometimes don't wear knitted stuff because it gets too hot, but nowadays I wear my knitted, I wear my knitted stuff whenever I can, which is basically every day. But I kind of like accumulate a pile as I wear them. Like I don't always put them back into the drawer, especially cardigans because I will wear them multiple times in a row. So I kind of just like put them in a pile and I forgot about this one. It was at the bottom of the pile. I was cleaning up my pile and I saw it and I was like, oh my gosh, I forgot that I had this cardigan and I love it so much. It is the perfect throw on over anything cardigan. So I am, um, it's made its revival back. And it hasn't even been that long, maybe like a month since I wore it last. But anyway, it is back and I love it. So I'm wearing it again. And that's what I'm wearing today. So now that we've talked about what I am wearing, which is, again, th there were no, it was all things I've talked about and finished previously. Uh, let's talk about finished objects. Well, one, one finished object. Can you guess what it is? It is my, I was gonna grab it, but let me talk about it first because it is still drying. I have it here and I'm going to hold it up carefully and then put it back. So it is my Calm Down Cardigan by Lily Kate Friends or Lily Kate Makes on Instagram. And it is a friend knit along. So I am knitting this cardigan along with my Seattle friends and also the Bay Area friend group. We have like a really cute group chat and I love it and we're all kind of like finishing it uh, here and there and it's been really fun. Uh, the yarn that I used is Woolberry Fiber Co. Berry DK in the colorway Rabbit Rump and I knit size one. I used US 4 and US 5 needles to make this cardigan. I believe I sized down my needles like one size uh, because just I knew that my gauge was going to be a little off. I, for some reason, my, whenever I, anyway, I usually have to size down my needles and it kind of seems like I have to do that for a lot of like DK weight yarn patterns for some reason, which is, I don't know why, but anyway, that is what I did. And I will talk about finished measurements next week because I plan on wearing it in next week's video so I can like talk more about it, talk about the fit and all of that. But it is done this week and so I wanted to talk about it and share it. So it is, it is a hefty knit. This was a lot of yarn. I'm going to try and hold it up the best I can, but again, it is still a little wet. Here it is. I am very happy with how it all came together and how it's currently blocking out because the there's a detail on this cardigan that I didn't know of until I started knitting it and read the instructions and I was like, why are we doing this? And this might be easier to talk about once I once it's all dry, but I can kind of see it coming together now is that on the button band is not actually straight down. So of course, our, the button band, there the cardigan is like a v-neck. So there were increases here along the front that was expected. But once you reach the button band like body part or like where the holes are, most cardigans just go straight down to the hem. But this one kind of curves. So it will leave like a, I'm gonna sit back down. So at the bottom, instead of the button band still going straight to the hem, it actually opens up like this. 
So there'll be a little opening near the bottom of the cardigan in the front. And I didn't know that that was a thing. Of course, now I look at the pictures and I'm like, yes, I can see it. That's what it's doing, but I just didn't pay attention. So anyway, before blocking, it was kind of hard to lay it flat because of the uh, decreases. And you know, just when there's like things going on that's not knitted flat, it's kind of hard when you lay an unblocked knitted thing, it kind of looks a little funky. So now that it is, drying and I can lay it flat I can see what it's going to look like a little better and I'm I think I'm liking it well I'm liking it a lot better now than before it was blocked but I think that that's for a lot of knitted objects but okay let me put this down okay so that is my calm down cardigan and I did have one extra skein left, like a full skein left over. I think I used most of, actually, let me check really quick. Yes, I used pretty much six skeins, but I did buy seven. So uh, yeah, I used like 5.7 skeins is what I have. Uh, in my Ravelry right now and I did measure it once I was done. I was like, all right, <laughs> I'm feeling motivated. I usually take a very long time to take yardage and like weigh my leftover yarn for projects. But last night I was like, yes, let's do it. We've done all my ends, blocked it and it is still drying. It is a very big cardigan. It is, again, it, I mean, it used a lot of yarn. It's like pretty much most of six skeins and I did have a seventh left over. I do not know what I am going to do with my leftover skein, but I am fine with that. I do like the colorway and could be fun to make something like matching uh, with the leftover yarn. So yeah, that is all I have to say for now about the cardigan. I do want to talk about it more next week when I wear it in the video and have a little more time to like wear it and maybe give more of a review on like actually wearing it for like a week so yeah so so that should be good but that is my one finished object for the week I really wanted to get that done because there are so many things I want to cast on and I was like no just finish finish the things that you have on your needles first or at least at least one at least some a couple uh, but with that, let's move on to talk about my whips. So as always, I have progress on my Mackenzie shawl by Sari Nordland. And let's see where my stitch marker is this week. It doesn't, you know, it's not that much. It's a couple inches, but it's still some progress. I think I, for long, longer projects like this, I think it's good just to see that I am making some progress, even if it's just a couple inches. But the good news is we finally got onto, we, we, I, sometimes I say we when all I mean is me, just me by myself. I'm the only person knitting on this. Uh, I started this fourth stripe. So this is a Sorry, let me talk about uh, this construction first before I talk about what I did. Uh, this is a two color brioche scarf or shawl by Sari Nordland and it has these uh, diagonal garter strip, garter, garter stitch stripes that go across like that to make it a little more interesting and I, there's supposed to be a total of four for the full uh, the full thing and I started my fourth one but I just this week got to the part where we're now like f we got the full width like earlier in these sections you're just building the width for the stripe and once I got to the full width we started you know adding in the brioche back again over here and so now this yeah, we're just working the full stripe now. So, feeling good about that. I don't have to look in the instructions to make sure I got my stitch count correct because now we just keep going until 
the stripe reaches all the way across to the other side. So we are getting there. I want to finish this so bad because there are so many other scarves and shawls, actually mostly just shawls that I want to knit that are also just big projects and I would really like to get this one done before I start some other ones, like I really want to make another half and half triangles wrap and there, I feel like there's an, oh, I wanna make the Vertices Unite shawl. I have yarn for that from like last summer and I've been wanting to cast on and it just hasn't, hasn't been the time yet. So, but I do wanna finish this before I cast on any more big shawl, like fingering weight shawl, shawls. So, but yeah, so here, is the full length. I can't hold it all the way out because my camera does not go that wide and I can't go past the wall that I have here. But you can see each side, this is the dark colored side. Oh yeah, yarn. I'm using both of the yarn colors I'm using is Olivia and Oliver Fibers Classic Sock. This is the colorway Woodland and the light color is Feather. And I'm really happy with how it's coming out. And I do, I do enjoy working on this. It is very relaxing, but it is kind of a work on it sometimes kind of knit or like when I want to just like not think too hard about it. Brioche has been, has become, it used to be very intimidating to me, but it now has become a very relaxing knit. Like it almost, it's almost like knitting garter stitch, which is maybe kind of weird to say or think, but it's very relaxing for me, and so I do very much enjoy this, but it is hard to get, just to like get started to work on this when I do, just because it's so much of the same thing, like so much, so, so much, but I know I'm going to really like the end product for this, but I cannot, I can't even think about blocking this. How am I gonna block this? I don't know. I'll probably fold it in half. It might take longer to dry, but I can't, oh my gosh, this thing's going to be so long. But anyway, that is my Mackenzie by Sorry Nordland. Next up, I have, I think, some good progress on my Yoon sweater by November Knits. And let's grab it here. I have made a bit more progress on the ribbed hem, the split hem part of this sweater. This is my stitch marker from last week. So I did work a good chunk of that. It's just worked flat right now and this is the front. So the back is just like on some, not that one. It's on, it's on, it's on hold. Uh, so just working the front ribbed body right now and it's looking a little strange because the rib is kind of like shrinking it widthwise but once you block it it should stretch out and be more to the width of the whole sweater and I think I just have a couple more inches to go until the recommended length for this ribbed hem section and yeah I think after I finish this front hem, I will move on to finish the sleeves and then I will go back to working the back hem. I think that that is going to be what I do if I remember to do that. So yeah, hopefully next up will be sleeves. But yeah, I am really happy with this progress so far. I'm excited for the finished object. It feels very soft. I did try it on and I like how it fits, but I am, again, just very curious to see once I start making the sleeves, like how that's going to look and feel. And yeah, I really like the yarn. I like the, the how the color is turning out. This is Woolberry Fiber Co. Uh, I'm holding two, they're the same colorway. The colorway is Stash, but I'm holding uh, Berry Surrey with Berry Natural DK, which is uh, Woolberry's non-superwash base. And I really like how it's looking together. And oh yeah, I am knitting size one. I'm using US seven and eight needles for this. 
and yeah again it's just so far just been a fun pretty fun knit very straightforward I guess like there's nothing super crazy about it and it's going to be pretty cozy I think I hope that it'll still be cold enough for me to wear this for a little bit after I'm done making it but either way I'll be happy to have it and if it's not cold enough to wear it I'll just have to wait until it gets cold enough to wear it but yeah this is this is the progress so far and yeah it's just it's looking it's, it looks a little weird because the ribbed is it's making it look all shrunk at the bottom but I hope it looks cute it does look cute on the the pattern and some other people's versions so I hope I hope it turns out looking uh, as cute as I'm hoping it will uh, I'm trying to think what else do I have to say about this so far I don't know again yeah it's a very straightforward knit the instructions for this for for this for this has been very minimal again again I think it's because like if you've made a sweater before I think you'll understand what's going on with the very little explanation I think one of the things that is not in the instruction here is like they'll say to put stitch markers or um yeah stitch markers or like markers to especially for the raglan when you're working this to put markers so that you know when to work the raglan stitches and it won't this in do the instructions say to slip your marker i could be thinking about another pattern but so maybe i just shouldn't say this but the pattern is just very minimal compared to some other patterns i've knit but it is so if you're like a very beginner knitter and you haven't knit a sweater before i probably wouldn't recommend this because instructions might be kind of confusing but if you've knit sweaters before you'll understand what's uh, going on so yeah that's my progress so far on that this is part of this is working towards one of my goals this year which is to use all of my woolberry rewind yarn that i bought last year and so stash was january's color last year so i've had this in my stash for like almost a year now and I'm excited to be using it. I, because I want to use all the rewind colors, I was, my aim, my goal is to finish one thing per colorway, whatever amount I have per month. And so that means I'm kind of behind because this was supposed to be January's project. I started in January, although not the first of January. So, you know, that should be okay. But it is a whole sweater, so it'll probably take me a little bit longer, but yeah, uh, we'll see. That is still project number one towards working, or yeah, working towards that goal. So that is my Yoon sweater. Next up, I have my Sweet Shop Blanket by Laura Penrose. And if you've been watching some of my more recent videos you'll know that I have like a really fun theme idea for this uh, blanket and that is to use Paisley Knits last year's season seasons boxes sock sets to make this and so the plan is probably around every week to finish one sock set and that doesn't mean to knit with all of the yarn from the sock set, but it is to knit four squares on this blanket. And that's split up for the sock set. Two squares are with the tonal colorway, the mini, and two squares with the main color variegated. So this week is week three. And so this is the sock set. Uh, that I, yeah, that I used for this week. This one is, and I'll hold up the variegated color here. This is the Mini Eggs Plus Levi's sock set. And so I believe the variegated is Mini Eggs and Levi's is the tonal 
brown. What's great about this is I get to use up pretty, it's pretty much all of the, the entire mini skein I use up for making two of the squares. And I, I just really like this idea. I think it's such, it's working out really well. I like how it's coming together so far. Let me hold up uh, what I have right now. So as you can maybe see, this is the four squares I started with. So this was the first sock set, which was a pink and green variegated and then a green mini. This was the second one. This is the third one. And then the fourth one will complete this like mini square, a four by four square. And that'll be all of the spring sock sets. And so each colorway, it will be represented twice in two squares for the blanket. And so for each season, I will have a four by four square for each season. I'm so excited about it. This has been really fun to work on. And yeah, I guess the only thing now is I will end up with a lot of these like because I only used about 20 grams of yarn, uh, 10 grams for each square. So I still have 80 grams of each variegated, which I don't know what I'm going to do. I was like, do I just like knit socks which, with each of them? And that might be what I end up doing, but not. I'm not totally sure what to do with it yet. But for now, I'm. they're just going to live like this once I'm done with the part of the blanket that I need it for. So uh, that is the progress on my Sweet Shop blanket. And so, yeah, the goal every week is to show four more squares. So hopefully next week we will have a finished spring square, four by four square. And I'm thinking maybe I will, since it is a longer term project and it might take me, if I, if I do one, if I do one sock set per week, that's like a month for one season, and there's four seasons, so like four months to make this. And it's definitely not, you know, that long term, but I think it would be cool to still kind of like document sections of it. And so I think maybe each season, I will take a picture or something of each, each square and share it on my Instagram. I think I wanna do that if I remember. I think it'd be really cute. So yeah, oh, I just I just love working on this. Oh, the other thing that I keep forgetting is if you're wondering what the plain color or the main color is for this blanket, it is just some undyed yarn that I have. Oh, and also all of the yarn I'm using is a fingering weight and I'm holding it double to get a DK weight, which is what the pattern uh, says to, or recommends to do. So yeah, it's been really fun to work on and it takes me a little over an hour to knit each square. So yeah, that is my Sweet Shop blanket and I've been really liking it. I cannot wait to see more of it get put together. I kind of wonder if it'll start to get really difficult to knit on as it grows because you do, there is no seaming, you pick up a knit to add on each square and so I wonder if towards the end it'll just feel you have to like make sure you place it a certain way so that you can knit on it but we will find out as we keep adding on squares so that is my sweet shop blanket and then oh I have a I have progress on a project that I have not made progress on since over a year ago. I did not work on this at all last year, I think. And it was actually like kind of a goal to finish it last year and it just didn't happen. But this is the year. I'm going to say it here now. This is the year that I'm going to finish my Midnight Jasmine Wrap by Alexi from Two of Wands. I cast this on in 2022, I believe. And it has just been I just, it's not something I've gravitated towards working on. I don't want to, I want to finish it. I don't want to rip it out. 
Also, it would be a pain to rip out. I actually wouldn't rip it out because... Anyway, let me show it to you and then maybe you'll understand. Here's my <laughs> progress on. This is a crochet project. It is a flower shawl. And so each of the flowers are crocheted separately. And they are, as you crochet them, you attach them. Uh, so you don't have to like actually sew them together, but they're individually made. As you can see, each of them are different colors. So if I did rip this out, there'd be like no point in saving the yarn because it would just be like short strands. I mean, not that short, but you'd only get, you can't like wind it up back on the ball because it's just for each, each flower. Anyway, can you even see how long this is? Okay, so thankfully this is a triangle wrap or shawl shape so it starts off at the longest row like the longest or largest number of flowers and it's getting shorter so thankfully that is what is happening uh and it is a one size pattern i am my crochet gauge is very loose i don't know what i don't feel like i crochet that loosely but it's very loose so I had to size down significantly uh, I believe that the pattern calls for an eye like I forget what the millimeter size is but I I believe it's the eye crochet hook and I'm using F which is 3.75 so I had to size down a ton although I don't actually remember what crochet hook size I used in the beginning but so maybe I went smaller I don't know but I mean it looks fine so anyway this is what I have right now I actually made good progress on this this past week I was like how am I going to put a stitch marker on this to show you progress and so I put a stitch marker on the last flower I made like in 2022 and so I have made this row, I finished that row all the way from my left hand here, from the stitch marker, all the way to my right hand. And I've also finished the row above that. And that is, I think, more than 20 flowers. Each flower might take me a little over 10 minutes. I, I count how or I kind of measure how long it takes me to make each one because I just kind of want to know how much how much longer time-wise it's going to take me to finish this. But I think right now I am at 98 flowers for this in total and the total number of flowers I think are 170 I believe and so I am Oh, am I halfway? I am over halfway. I'm over halfway, so that is nice. Uh, but yeah, I will say, you know, it, it doesn't feel too bad to work on this. So I think as long as I have this out, I just have to keep it out. This is another project that I want to make small amounts of progress on each week. Even if it's just one flower, which I would preferably like to make, maybe make like 10 per week at least. But even if it's just one, I want to make, I want to be able to talk about this every podcast just to show progress. So that is, that is a plan. That's a goal because I want to, I just want to get some of the stuff that has been lingering uh, and hiding. I want to get them done. So that is me talking about and bringing back from my closet the Midnight Jasmine Wrap. Uh, oh, the yarn that I'm using for this is from Lion Brand, and it's Alexi's collection. It was the Two of Wands Color Theory collection, and I have one, two, three, four, five, six. Six different colors here. I made up this color combination. I think it, I think I like, I mean, I like how it looks together. I don't know if it, like, actually looks good together, all of the colors, but I like it. So we're just going to go with it, and yeah. That is the progress on this, and I'm hoping I will talk about this more and on a more frequent basis. I really would, again, just work on this every week, just a little bit, so 
I'm saying it now so that I keep myself accountable. All right, and I'm surprised. That is like all I've been, that's all I've worked on this week. No new cast-ons, although the Midnight Jasmine Wrap might feel like a new project since I just haven't talked about it in like a year. So if, you're new, if you are a new viewer, you probably are like, I've never seen that before, but it's been a very long time. Uh, okay, so now. On to my spinning, because I made a lot of spinning progress this week too, which is maybe another reason why I don't have that many knitting things to talk about, but also, who knows, I'm, I'm at the stage right now where I want to clear some stuff off my needle so that I can cast on new things. There's so many new things I want to cast on. Okay, but on to spinning. So, I have a finished object for spinning. And it is all, it's done, like I applied it, and I washed it, and it's dried, and I twisted it. And so now it's in a really cute skein. Are you ready? Oh, it's so cute. Okay, so this is my Nest Fiber Club Targi Fiber in the colorway Cassiopeia. And... It came out so cute. This is, I did a two-ply fractal spin for this. And what I've been doing lately with my fractal spins is, if you're wondering why there's like one big skein and one mini one, is that I will, when I am plying, I'll just keep plying until one of my bobbins run, runs out. And that'll get me my big skein and with whatever I have left over since I don't want to add that to like because a fractal spin is supposed to give you like a certain color repeat I don't want to mess with it by plying together the leftovers of one of my bobbins because that was supposed to be like one side of the color repeat if that makes sense and if it doesn't uh, I think that's okay but I'm all I'm doing is I will I make two bobbins of singles, ply them together. They're never going to be equal, and so with the leftover from whichever bobbin has more fiber on, I ply it with itself into its own little mini skein. And so this time, I didn't have, ooh, I didn't have too much leftover. This is pretty small compared to some of my other mini skeins of leftover uh, singles, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm planning on keeping all of like my leftover uh, skeins or like, yeah, my leftover mini skeins from like each spin to maybe do something with together. Like that might be kind of cute. I just don't know what yet. I was like, do I make another sweet shop blanket, but like hand spun version? That might be kind of cute. Uh, but it would also depend like if my I think most of my spins lately have been around the same kind of weight of yarn, but, you know, we'll see. But yeah, this is Cassiopeia. It's a very happy and bright colorway. I think it, it's just mostly orange and some of, like, that green-blue spots there. But yeah, I do think that this one is mostly orange. Uh, but... It makes me very happy. It looks very cute. And oh, one thing I was very interested by was that this is my first, actually this is my second uh, Targi spin, but my first spin with it, I was trying to make a heavier weight. So I got more of like a DK weight or worsted weight yarn. And this time I wanted to get more of maybe a fingering or sport weight. And it might be, it's probably more like sport weight, but like, I wanted this one to be my first tar or like first targi like smaller weight yarn and oh my gosh it is so good like when you like squish it or when you like pull on it it is so bouncy and I feel like it was I could kind of tell that from my DK weight yarn but I was just interested to see if when you spin it thinner if you can still feel that bounce in the yarn and you can it is great you can even just tell from feeling the targi like when it's just in the fiber like it is very bouncy and squishy 
and it does translate over like after you uh, turn it into yarn that yeah it's still very bouncy and squishy and I cannot wait to knit with this to see how it feels knitted up I don't know what I'm going to knit with this yet maybe socks but it also might be fun in as a contrast color in some garments I don't know I don't know yet but we I you know I usually just like to look at these before I knit them up anyway I don't it's just so they're just so pretty just like this and so I want to kind of keep them like this for some time before I decide to wind them up and knit with them but yeah this is my finish finished spin for this week and then I Actually, do I have more to talk about this? No, I think that that's it. That's my finished spin. Next, I have progress on my sweater spin, which is, uh, I am using John Arbin Textiles Yarnadelic Top. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, it is a 100% Falklands Corydale. And the colorway I got is called the Beautiful Ones. And I finished another four ounces of my of singles. So now I have I'm planning on spinning four ounces of singles onto each bobbin. So that will give me around six bobbins, I think. And so this is number two of six. So I do have one finished one. This is my second finished one. I actually finished spinning this this morning. I didn't think I was going to finish spinning it for today's video, but I did finish it and it's looking really good. It's kind of hard to see on camera what the colors on this look like when it's spun up, but there is a lot of color depth in it. Like you can just see all of the different colors still kind of like spun up in there and so yeah it's just very cool looking i'm very excited about this spin i am spinning this on my electric eel wheel 6.0 so the bobbins are like huge and i think that it's getting it looks pretty even for the most part excited to ply this up when i eventually do but i'm saving the plying until the very end so I won't be like spinning plying spinning plying I want to spin it all and then ply it all at the same time so let's see yeah that's all I have just one more one more finished bobbin for my sweater spin and yeah oh I don't think I've updated you all on my electric eel wheel I think I mentioned a few weeks ago that I kind of started having problems with it. It wouldn't like start up, like it wouldn't start spinning even though it was on and I had like the dial turned on or sometimes it'll work and then when I press the pedal to stop so I can like adjust the hooks on it and then start it up again with the button, it just wouldn't work. But I, I just, so I don't know what's going on with it, but what I have been doing and it's been working and so I'm okay with it for now is it seems like it might be getting stuck a little bit or something so sometimes if it doesn't go or like it'll move a little bit and then stop I just like spin the wheel to get it started and then it'll spin so for now that's what I'm doing I feel like it's gotten slightly better but I still do need to kind of like give it that initial push when I turn it on or every time I start it again so that's interesting, but for now, like, I'm okay living with that because it still still works. I just have to give it a little push. So, but yeah, that is bobbin number two for my sweater spin. And then, since I am working on my sweater spin on my electric eel wheel, I have my ladybug wheel. Is now open there's nothing on it because I finished my Cassiopeia spin so this morning I started another spin and I have fun ideas for this one so at least I think it's fun 
I started my spin on, oh, I wish I could have shown you the fiber braid. Although I did when I had it as a acquisition. Anyway, this is the Union Fiber, fiber uh, from New Zealand. It is a Corydell Nylon 8020. And I, yeah, I started spinning it. So I split it in half. And so this is just one of the balls. I didn't want to take apart my, the wheel to get the bobbin to show you what I have so far. I didn't get that far today, but I just wanted to show you my little wound up ball of fiber, just to show you the colors that I am working with. This one is interesting because I don't know if I have worked with a fiber that has just kind of like spots of color and not just like longer strips of color. So I'll just unravel some of this here. So yeah, they're just kind of like spots of color. And I do not know how the colors will blend when it's spun up and how it'll look applied. Like I have no idea how to, what's a good strategy for this. So I'm just like making it up as I go. And the fun thing I have planned for that spin is I am planning on recording parts of my spinning for this. And so I, I'm hoping the way that it'll work out is that from start to finish, I will be recording certain sections of me working on it. So all the way from seeing the fiber braid and unbraiding it and splitting the fiber and winding it up and starting it on the wheel and spinning it and plying it and finishing it. I want to try and capture uh, some of that and put it all in one video once it's all done. And so you'll have one video of seeing how I go about spinning my fiber because I, I know on the podcast I do show you my spins but I don't ever really talk about it or what my process is like or how I decide what I'm going to do or yeah basically any of my thoughts that go into actually spinning it I just show you my singles and then I show you when it's done uh, so I thought it'd be fun to uh, maybe do a one video where I have clips from like multiple days working on it kind of thing it's actually an idea from one of my friends so thank you so much for the video idea i hope it works out but anyway i will still talk about it here on the podcast probably not in too much detail like just talk about it how i have been for my spins although if there is something you want for me to talk about in the weekly podcast about spinning please let me know i just don't know what would be the most interesting uh information to talk about but I am planning on filming some of that process, my process of spinning. It is by no means going to be like a tutorial, but it's just going to be more of a, here's how I do it, and here's my thought process on why I decided to do what I did, or yeah, is this one going to come out the way that I'm expecting? I'm, gonna, I'm going to say this one I definitely wanted to get a video of my process because I don't know what to expect from it because yeah again because of the color splotches on it I just have no idea how it's going to spin up and plying it and how to predict the color color changes or barber polling or anything like that so anyway we'll see if that video comes out um, again it'll be I want it to be beginning to end so it won't be a video that comes out anytime super soon because I need to finish it like finish the spinning of it and then you know make the video and all that but that is my idea to do that and I hope that it'll maybe be interesting I don't know so anyway that is my plans for that fiber it is a fiber I it was one of my recent fiber acquisitions I got it from uh, La Mercerie when I went to uh, when I went to the store for sorry Nordland uh, I did buy it on that same day. So it's a pretty recent acquisition and I'm happy to be working with it pretty soon. Well, yeah, very soon after I got it. I already started, but yeah. 
so that is that project and I think I've been liking having a sweater spin and a like smaller spin working at the same time so far it's been going well so yeah so that's all I have for my spinning this week and now I have one acquisition for this week my one acquisition is it is yarn but it is for a gift knit and so I kind of don't really count it I'm going to count it in my counts but I'm like it's fine that I bought this yarn okay so I bought some knit picks swish DK and it's in this gray color I think it's oh it's marble Heather and I got I got a good amount of this because I am planning on making some leg warmers for my skating coach and I've been wanting to knit her something for some time and I just like couldn't figure out what I wanted to knit her so I was like not a sweater like I thought it'd be cute for something you could wear when you skate and I was like maybe gloves but I don't want to make gloves I also don't really usually see her wear gloves so I was like Mm, I don't know and then I was like maybe a beanie I was totally okay making a beanie but I was talking to her about it because I don't want it to be I don't want it to be something she doesn't want so she said what about leg warmers and I was like oh I've never knit leg warmers before but I think I think it'll be good I don't know why I've never actually I know why I've never knit leg warmers before I've thought about it for myself to make leg warmers when I skate because I do occasionally like wearing leg warmers when I skate but I am all the reason why I haven't knit myself any is because I am worried that I'm going to poke a hole in them but I've never poked a hole in the ones I use anyway I think it's because I'm not doing anything super crazy when I skate so that's probably why I don't poke holes in my leg warmers or my leggings, but I was like, I'd be fine with making leg warmers. It should be easy. It should be just a tube, and then you make two of them. Might feel a bit of, like, kind of boring to work on, but also I don't want to, like, make something super complicated that will end up not working if that's the case. So... I was like, sure. So we talked about colors, and I hope she's okay. Uh, well, she wanted a gray, and so I'm hoping this shade of gray is all right, but I'm gonna make it in, in this yarn. So anyway, I got some of this. I don't think I'm going to follow a pattern. I think I'm just going to make it up and just hope for the best. She did give me her current leg warmers so that I could get, I, I requested them so I could get have a sample of a size that she likes and works for her and so I'm just going to follow that sizing I'll probably do some maybe like a two by two rib leg warmer it'll probably just be straight so and one thing is she does want it to be lengthwise I was like what length are you thinking and she wants it to be over the knee so they're going to be very long leg warmers but yeah I wanted to go with knit pick swish DK because it's a good yarn, it's uh, machine washable, and it's not like, it's a very soft yarn. Like, it's a fine yarn to work with. I've worked with it before. It is on the more affordable side compared to the hand-dyed yarn that I usually buy, and yeah, I think it'll, I think it'll be good. But that is the acquisition that I have for this week, and it's for a gift knit, and yeah. Oh, I don't think I've mentioned this, but... This year, I do have plans on making more gifts, gift knits. I don't think I knit any... Oh, no, that's a lie. Last year, I made one thing for one person. It was the socks for my boyfriend. That was the one, like, gift, like, a knit thing that I made for someone else last year. I'm a pretty selfish knitter. I really like to knit things for myself, and I just get very... Uh, yeah, I get very picky about the things I knit for other people if I decide to do it because I want to make sure that it's loved and well taken care of and, you know, there's certain yarn and colors that I usually like to work with and so, yeah, it's just very, 
very hard. I'm, I am a very selfish knitter, but this year I do have plans on knitting things for other people, and this is one of them. It's leg warmers for my skating coach. And if it goes well, then I'll probably make some for myself too. So yeah, that is all I have to talk about today. I am feeling very happy with the projects that I have been working on lately. I am feeling good about my progress. I feel good about working on towards my goals this year, but there are so there's so many new patterns or not new, but so many patterns I want to cast on soon and so I hope I can finish uh, some of these things um, pretty quickly so I can cast on new things but I also might just cast on one of those things is or not not just one but like I have yet to cast on something from sorry Northern this book and I want to cast on something so badly so that might be my next cast on is something from her book we will see. It'll depend how I am feeling. Oh, another thing. I I don't know if it, to me, it kind of feels like I have been talking, I had less things to talk about for knitting for the past few episodes. And part of the reason, not that I ever, you know, not that anyone needs a reason to not be knitting too, so much as, you know, before or, you know, after or whatever. But I have been my knitting time has been kind of cut a little bit uh every week because I am working on something for work I have a work thing that I'm working towards it is a certification that I need to study for so sadly some of my knitting time is being pulled away from me for now but I am hoping that within the next couple of months I can get that done and so that I can get more time to my knitting and my spinning. But other than that, I am just still very grateful that I still have time to knit and spin as much as I can, even with my uh, studying. So uh, with that, thank you all so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I am... Yeah, I haven't had any new cast-ons, I feel like, for a while. So it's just pretty much been progress, project updates. And, but yeah, I'm hoping it's so interesting. I, yeah, I'm feeling good. Feeling good. I hope you're also all feeling good about your projects so far this year. And, as always, I love reading your comments down below. And if you'd like, feel free to subscribe if you haven't subscribed already. And and or follow me on Instagram. My Instagram is at Airy Knits. It's the same name as this podcast. And I have been really trying to post some of my finished object pictures from last year, from like months, months ago, because I have the pictures. I just like haven't posted them. So I've been trying to. And by trying, I mean, I think I posted like two uh, out of maybe like five or six that I have. So I'm gonna keep trying to get get my finished object pictures out there on Instagram mostly also for me because I I'd like to see like that for myself like oh what did I make lately or recently like I'd like to see those uh, finished object pictures so and also I use my Instagram pictures to also put in my Ravelry so I would like to have a picture for every finished object I have in my Ravelry as well but anyway, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're all having a great day and hope you're having a good start to your February. And I'll see you next week. Bye.